Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are discussing about bullous disorders of skin. The most common disorders are Famphigus vulgaris, Famphigus foliaceus, Bullous Famphigoid, Epidermolysis bullosa, Epidermolysis bullosa equisita, Dermatitis herpetiformis, and IgA linear disease. These all are autoimmune diseases. So let's see the classification. The bullous disorders are of two type: one having epidermal blister and second having a sub epidermal blister the epidermal blister diseases are famphigus vulgaris and famphigus foliaceus and the rest are bullous famphigoid epidermolysis bullosa epidermolysis bullosa equisita dermatitis herpetiformis and iga linear disease these all have a sub epidermal blister in famphigus vulgaris there is a supra basal acantholysis so there is a gap between basal layer and the rest epithelium in the famphigus foliaceus there is a sub corneal acantholysis so there is a gap between corneal layer and the rest epithelial layers in a bullous famphigoid there is a linear deposition of immunoglobulin g and c3 on epidermal aspect of dermoepidermal junction in EBA, there is a linear deposition of immunoglobulin G and C3 at a dermal site of dermoepidermal junction. And in dermatitis herpetiformis, there is a granular deposition of Ig and C3 in the papillary dermis. In the IgA linear disease, there is a linear deposition of Ig around the basement membrane. So let's see the illustration. In the famphigus vulgaris, there is a gap between basal layer and the rest epithelial keratinocytes so first is basement membrane then basal layer spinosome layer granular layer and corneal layer these all are the layers of the skin so in vulgaris there is a gap between basal layer and all rest epithelial layers in the famphigus foliaceous there is a sub corneal blister so there is a gap between corneal layer and a remaining epithelial layers so in the famphigus foliaceous, this is the gap. Let's understand the microstructure of basement membrane zone. The basement membrane consists of lamina lucida and lamina densa. On this basement membrane, the basal keratinocyte rests. They attaches with each other via desmosomes and fibrils. And they attaches with basement membrane with hemidesmosomes and anchoring filaments this whole structure anchors through papillary dermis via anchoring fibrils which consist of collagen type 7 so let's understand the sub epidermal blisters immunoglobulin deposits so in Bullous famphigoid, there is a IgG C3 deposition where there are autoantibodies against the hemidesmosomes proteins. So, the deposition is on the epidermal aspect of basement membrane. In EBA, there is autoantibodies against collagen 7 of papillary dermis. So, there is a deposition of immunoglobulin G and C3 on the dermal aspect of basement membrane. In dermatitis herpetiformis, there is a deposition of Ig or C3 in a granular pattern in whole papillary dermis. The last is there is a linear deposition of IgA throughout the basement membrane which is a linear IgA disease. Now let's learn one by one. First is Famphigus vulgaris. It affects mucous membrane plus skin. Suprabasal acantholysis is seen. Autoantibodies are anti-desmoglain 1 and 3 immunoglobulin antibodies. The disease usually begins with mucosal ulceration when skin is involved later. Most common sites are mucous membrane, upper and central chest, back, face, scalp and flexures. Associated HLAs are DRB1 and HLA DQB1. Famphigus foliaceous. In this disease, only skin is involved. The mucous membrane is spared. There is a subcorneal acantholysis. And here, autoantibodies are anti-desmoglin 1 immunoglobulin antibodies. 
there is an endemic pemphigus foliaceus common in tunisia and brazil which is called fogo selvagem sometimes the pemphigus is drug induced and which is associated with penicillamine and captopril hlas are associated with pemphigus foliaceus are hla dr4 dr14 dr1 symptoms include burning pruritus and pain there are scattered and crusted lesions involving seboric areas such as scalp and face the nikolsky sign is present disease may stay localized for year or it may rapidly progress to generalized involvement resulting in exfoliative erythroderma it is associated with high morbidity mortality and potential life threatening complications the septicemia is a leading cause of death in pemphigus the diagnosis is done by hne direct immunofluorescence indirect immunofluorescence and elisa the direct immunofluorescence is always performed on the normal appearing perilesional skin on hne if the blister roof is missing the basal keratinocytes may separate from one another laterally which resembles a row of tombstone in pemphigus vulgaris dif reveals intercellular immunoglobulin or c3 deposition in the epidermis which shows a chicken wire fence or honeycomb fluorescence pattern in pemphigus foliaceus if blister roof is missing then remaining epidermis looks relatively normal so the findings can be non specific the bulla contain fibril neutrophils scattered acantholytic keratinocytes and these keratotic cells in the granular layer of older lesions distinguish pemphigus foliaceus from pemphigus vulgaris treatment the first line treatment of mild pemphigus is systemic corticosteroids which takes several weeks to achieve a response second line treatment is in the combination of corticosteroids include adding either azathioprine or mycophenolate mofetil anti cd20 monoclonal antibodies such as rituximab and ofatumumab have also been used in conjugation with corticosteroids for the first line treatment in moderate to severe pemphigus third line treatment includes intravenous immunoglobulin cyclophosphamide dapsone immunoadsorption and methotrexate now let's learn about the sub epidermal blisters the first is bullus pemphigoid it occurs in older patients more than 60 years and it is more prevalent in patients with neurological disease such as stroke dementia and parkinson's disease the pathology is a dysregulated t cell immune response and synthesis of igg and ige autoantibodies against the basal keratinocyte hemidesmosomal proteins such as bp180 and bp230 this leads to neutrophil chemotaxis and degradation of basement membrane zone the symptoms of bullus pemphigoid first is proromal phase in this phase patient may experience moderate to severe pruritus alone or associated with articular papular lesions this proromal phase evolves into bulla in weeks to months typically present in the axilla on the flexor surface of forearm medial thigh trunk and abdomen the nikolsky sign is negative diagnosis of bullus pemphigoid it is done by hne dif and elisa hne shows sub epidermal split with superficial perivascular inflammatory infiltrate and numerous eosinophils dif shows deposition of igg or c3 in the linear homogeneous pattern at the basement membrane zone on the epidermal side elisa detects antibodies to nc16a domain of bp180 or bp230 the treatment is mainly systemic corticosteroids alternative agents are similar to that of pemphigus treatment next is epidermolysis bullosa it also shows sub epidermal blister it is inherited dermatosis characteristically featuring skin fragility secondary to structural defect in dermo epidermal junction trivial mechanical trauma and shear stress can provoke skin blistering erosions and ulceration there are four major groups of epidermolysis bullosa 
First is epidermolysis bullosa simplex EBS it comprises of 70% of cases which features fragility defect in epidermis mostly inherited in autosomal dominant pattern the seven mutated genes have been isolated as a cause of this disease second is junctional epidermolysis bullosa it is an autosomal recessive fragility defect seen specifically within the lamina lucida and makes up around the 5% of cases seven distinct mutated genes have been found as a cause of this disease dystrophic epidermolysis bullosa which represent around 25% of cases and it may have autosomal dominant or recessive pattern it features a fragility defect below the lamina densa of basement membrane zone due to mutant collagen 7a1 kindler epidermolysis bullosa is a rarest of four major epidermolysis bullosa types inherited in autosomal recessive pattern the kindlin 1 protein is affected in this case due to defect in FERMT1 gene which result in fragility in any plane of dermoepidermal junction symptoms the acrylic distributed blistering with keratoderma is a hallmark of localized ebs it affects hands feet buttocks and knees a conventional light microscopy has a no role in diagnosis of epidermolysis bullosa immunofluorescence antigen mapping and transmission electron microscopy help subtype these cases by highlighting target antigens and quantifying their abundance genetic screening can confirm the subtype it can be done through ngs the next is epidermolysis bullosa acquisita it also shows sub epidermal blister it is acquired type of disease here skin and mucous membrane both are involved and there are auto antibodies against type 7 collagen type 7 collagen is a crucial component of anchoring fibrils within dermo epidermal junction connecting the papillary dermis to lamina densa diagnosis on hne there is a sub epidermal blister milia formation and dermal fibrosis can be seen in dif there is a linear deposition of immunoglobulin g and c3 at the dermo epidermal junction on dermal site let's learn the treatment of epidermolysis bullosa and eba there are currently no curative therapy for this disease to management include supportive care symptom control and prevention of mild to severe complications blisters are prevented by reducing exposure to mechanical trauma squamous cell carcinoma is a devastating complications of this disease next is dermatitis herpetiformis it is a chronic autoimmune blistering disease that cause extremely pruritic rash that predominantly affects the extensor surfaces it is closely associated with gluten sensitive enteropathy both conditions are characterized by development of immunoglobulin a auto antibodies against transglutaminase it is associated with hla dq2 and hla dq8 the first degree relatives of patients with gse or dermatitis herpetiformis are characteristically more likely to be affected in dermatitis herpetiformis there is a epidermal transglutaminase 3 may be the dominant antigens against which iga auto antibodies are formed symptoms include rash with itch most typically over the extensor surface of elbow knees buttocks and scalp there are grouped erythematous plaques and vesicles can be seen on extensor sites diagnosis on hne there is a sub epidermal blister formation with neutrophil located at the tips of dermal papilla there is a frequently perivascular inflammatory infiltrate is seen on dif there is a deposition of iga or c3 in the papillary dermis in the granular or fibrillar pattern the treatment include strict adherence to gluten free diet and medical management include dapsone and related sulfonamide drugs and potent topical steroids the next is iga linear disease here skin and mucosa both are involved 
The disease is characterized by the linear deposition of Ig at the basement membrane zone. It can be idiopathic or it can be drug induced. The associated underlying diseases are inflammatory bowel disease, solid and lymphoid malignancies and rheumatoid arthritis. Linear IgA bullous disease may present as toxic epidermal necrolysis (TEN). It is a severe cutaneous adverse drug reaction with widespread blistering and painful loss of skin. Most common sites are limb, face and trunk. Diagnosis On HNE, there is a sub-epidermal blister is seen. In DIF, there is a linear IgA deposits around the basement membrane zone. Management include treatment with Dapson, topical corticosteroids and antibiotics. So this is in short about bullous disorders of skin and these are the references for this video. Hope you like it. Thank you. Bye. See you in the next video.